Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. The Lord is good. His mercies endure forever. We thank the Lord for this course 104. They call cost and reward of discipleship, which is part of the basic program of the Global School of Ministry and the Advanced Mentorship class with the Master class. Today we are in lesson 10 and is a, a re-emphasis on a point that was introduced in the previous lesson and this is that the, one of the core reasons for Yeshua's sacrifice is that we may be adopted into the family of Elohim. So we need to understand adoption a little bit more. It was brought yesterday I mean, in the previous lesson, let's pray. Father in heaven, just have your way and glorify Yeshua. Bring us into understanding of what you have provided for us, that we will not miss it. Your name will be glorified. Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So, in order to really get a full understanding of adoption, we go to the 16 Glorious Truths, which is one of the uh, courses in the School of Ministry, and where it talks about, among the 16 Glorious Truths, one of them is the Glorious Truth of Adoption. You see, discipleship, where we die to self and we are sold out for the Lord, what it does is to bring us into receiving one of the most radical blessings for which Yeshua came. Because Yeshua didn't come to establish a religion called Christianity or Christendom. Yeshua came for reasons that are simple. He came to restore relationship between the Elohim and humans so that he will not be like a distant unknown God to whom we are strangers or willing slaves or orphans or in arrested babyhood syndrome, but a God that is near. And that nearness, he effects it through the, the, the gift of adoption. So Yeshua came that through his death, we may be adopted into the family of Elohim. We are told in Ephesians 1, 4 to 6, according as he has chosen us in him. He, Elohim, chose us in him before the foundation of this world. Thou should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yeshua to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, where he made us accepted in the beloved. The entire story or plan of redemption from a, a divine point of view is different from what you are were taught religiously. Religion teaches us to struggle, labor, try, push, shove, to enter into the kingdom. The kingdom gospel tells us that before we were even created, the Lord had done things already. Yeshua had come already. And it's only a matter of us. As the Africans say, when a man wakes up is this morning, the day you wake up to receive the move of the spirit in your heart the day you surrender to what the Lord has already planned for you, you become a child of the Most High you are adopted in the family of Elohim and we are told in Colossians 1.30 who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son brothers and sisters, the redemption price has been paid fully by the blood that Yeshua shed we are now adopted into the family of Yahweh. We have full rights and privileges as sons indeed. Men and brethren, is so important. Our relationship with our Father should be personal. It should be intimate. It's that which there's no, nothing we cannot talk with him. And we are open to hear from him. Adoption, therefore, is the core basis on which kingdom life differs from religion and religious devotions. Religion essentially causes you to worship a distant unknown God in fear and trepidation what he or she will do if you don't meet a long list of expectations and rules the Yahweh who we must deal with is opposite, he has revealed himself to us in Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua says if you see me, you see in the Father he is love personified and this contrasts with the old covenant concept of Yahweh who revealed himself to Moses intimately, but to Israel, 
Israel stayed afar. Israel was at the foot of the mountain. Moses could come up to the mountain. And that's why Hebrews chapter 1, 1 to 3 says he spoke in sundry times to, to, to the fathers. But in these last times, he's speaking to Israel through his only son. And that's why Psalm 107, 103 verse 7 says, Elohim made his no ways known unto Moses, his acts unto children of Israel. To Israel afar up, his acts, the thundering, the voices, the talk, all the things they saw. To Moses himself, Moses said, show me your glory. I go nowhere without you. So it's so important for us to be able to receive that adoption is something the Lord has ordained for us. You know, if you know, if you look at the story of Yeshua, when he called the disciples, they were just servants. When he's rowing, when they are crossing the lake, he's asleep, they are rowing. When he's in the crusade ground, they are worried what will happen. He said, bring bread, maybe five loaves, seven fishes, bless it, or five, two fishes, bless it, distribute it, everybody will eat, they will distribute all they did was whatever they were told. They didn't have to know why. That servant. Then in John 15, he told them, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. He promoted them to friends. And that was how they were friends. He could take some of them into more intimate places. Then the day he resurrected from the dead, when he had finished paying the price at the cross, Mary Magdalene came to uh, embrace him, say, no, don't. I've not yet gone to my father. Your father, go and tell my brethren. He promoted those friends to sons of Elohim who were like his brethren. And as you say in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 9 all the way to 15, you see the concept articulated. And in that John 20, 17 and others. Why do we need to say this? Adoption is a legal covenant. When you are adopted into a family, you are entitled all the rights and privileges of the new standing that intimacy gives you. In Roman times, in Roman law, once you adopted somebody, you cannot tomorrow because you now had a boy of your own, that boy now begins to become the firstborn. No. If you adopted, you have adopted. And that's the concept the Lord wants us to know. We are adopted into his family. We have standing with the Father. Just like the ultimate son, Yeshua. We have our standing. We have intimate relationship. He, lives, he allows his spirit to come in, to guide us. So anything we need information, direction on, the spirit of the Lord inside. is the spirit of adoption. It is the spirit that tells us to call Elohim Abba Father. In Romans 4, Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit is a bearer witness of that Spirit, that we are the children of Elohim. If children then hears, hears of Elohim and join hairs with Yeshua, if so be we suffer with him, we shall be glorified together. So through adoption, we have the potential to be heirs of Yahweh and join heirs with Yeshua. And this glorious privilege is something we shouldn't toss away with ignorance. And when you don't know adoption, you gravitate to any of those four negative relationship, relationship types. Stranger, unwilling slave, an orphan, and arrested babyhood syndrome. So, if you know who you are in him, you are not going to run around anointed men or women of God. You know you are connected to heaven. You are connected to the Father of light. He owns all. He has all. He loves us without partiality. He has enough for you, enough for other people. You refuse error. You won't be a grandchild of anyone. You will take your place in Yeshua, your identity in Yeshua, and you live like a victor, and not a victim of circumstances. When we're babes, we did not fully understand our identity as adopted sons of Yahweh, and therefore the elements of nature could take us and play football with our lives. Now that we are mature in Yeshua, 
We drop all babyhood things. We drop all things that make us look like strangers. We have our identity in the Lord. And that's why the Lord says in Galatians 4, 1 to 7, that we need to come to a place where we are no longer children. Because we understand that the Lord has redeemed us. You know, and he says in Galatians 4, from verse 4, but when the fullness of time was come, Elohim sent forth his only son, his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. We receive it. It's a legal thing. It's happened. And because you are sons, Elohim has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father, as an affectionate term for the father. It's not just father, but daddy. Daddy. When he hears that from you, he responds. Those in, adopted into the family of Yahweh, they are not to be judged by their race, by their color, by their gender, by socioeconomic status or geographical location. The only thing which defines them is who they are in him and who Yeshua is in them. Galatians 3, 26 to 29, we mentioned it in the previous lesson. And it's so much to know that if you know that you are adopted family of Elohim, then 2 Corinthians 5, 16 makes sense to you. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Though we have known Yeshua after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. You don't know people after the flesh. You are not moved by all these things people do. You are not moved. You know your connection. You want to put your connection where it matters. So it's so important that we understand. And there are four key concepts the Lord wants us to consider. One of them is the new life we receive in Yeshua is based on spiritual relationships, not religion, not rituals. And it is that is what it means to worship Him in spirit and in truth. As John 4, 23, 24 says, Number two, since we are now members of the family, our relationship with him is defined by his nature, which is grafted into us. In other words, we have his DNA. It's flowing through our spiritual veins. We are his offsprings. The father-son relationship with Yeshua is now extended to us, as we're told in Hebrews 2, 10 to 8. And Paul said in Acts 17, 28, 29, For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of Elohim, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto silver, I mean unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. No, it's not like that. It's not something you can engrave and put in your pocket. Number three, then there is a conundrum of adoption, meaning there is a progression. We start life as babes in the Lord. We desire the sincere milk of the world. We drink it. And as we continue with him, we just do things, whatever he tells us to do, we do it. We may not understand. We are servants in that mindset. Then from there, we saw what we said at the beginning of this, we press on to a place where we yearn for intimacy with him, then we become friends. And then later we get to understand the fullness of why he purchased us and why he paid the price, which is adoption as sons. So we keep growing. We keep growing. You don't allow any state to be where you pack and then we pack there and you forget who you are. Brothers and sisters, then number four, adoption into the family of Yahweh makes us co heirs with Yeshua, as Romans 8 14 to 17 says. And there are three dimensions of this co heirship. One, in the now, we are ambassadors of the kingdom with single minded pursuit of, of the things of the kingdom and its righteousness. We make it our priority. We represent Him anywhere and everywhere. Anywhere we go, we represent him. Number two, success is achieved not by a struggle, but by receiving all he has ordained through which we're going to fulfill our assignments. So we say that our 
allocation, your allocation of resources is going to be enough and more than your assignment. And that comes by not by mind or by power. The race is not to the swift. Number three, there's an eternal dimension of the co-heirship where we rule and reign with Yeshua when he returns to establish the full phase of the kingdom. And so we look forward to it. It's not something we allow to you know, get blanked out in us. The human nature is such that if you are not careful, certain things will slip off. You forget you're on a journey. But once you remember that the Lord may come this morning, this afternoon, anytime, and you don't know, then you never say, let me go and sleep. Let me go and slumber. You act like the wise virgins. You are awake in the spirit. You know what you're doing because you know that it is when he returns that the rewards will be given. That there is no reward for those who slumber. Rather, there is rebuke for them. So you keep awake. You keep alive. You do not allow anything and anyone created by Elohim to make you to miss the kingdom. You cannot say, hey, I was busy doing this then. My crown was taken away. You ought to value your crown. Value your crown greatly. And remember, brothers and sisters, this is something that is not often discussed. We will rule and reign with Yeshua when he returns. When he returns, he will sit at the throne of David in Jerusalem as a great potentate over the entire earth rim. But the kingdom will be too vast. So what will happen? He will post people, UK, USA, the various nations of the earth. He will post over the counties. You post over the states. You post over the cities. There's enough room for all who have labored sincerely. There is enough room for the, the assignments to take care on behalf of Yeshua as priest and kings. So we need to understand these things. We need to receive them. We need to imbibe them. And when this is so, you know what? There's going to be a great shift. We're going to have the healthy self-esteem. Our esteem is in Yeshua and what he did for us at the cross of Calvary. We know we are adopted into the family. Nobody can come and talk us out of it. We know that we are secure in him. And therefore, by the grace of the Lord, we're able to face tomorrow. We're able to face every situation, every circumstance, knowing that our Father has our back. Brothers and sisters, this will cure the issues of the four negative relationship types. This is going to cause disciples to be true disciples, not religious folks who are doing religious things. A lot of people think they are disciples. They are not. They are disciples of men, of pastors, of overseers, of apostles, of prophets, of evangelists, of, of pastors and teachers. They are disciples of organizations, religious organizations. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about disciples of Yeshua HaMashiach, who follow him in all things, who hear from the Lord concerning what to do. Amen, and brethren. It is so important that we receive this and the Lord will bless everyone who walks in the understanding of being adopted into the family of Elohim. But what of assignment? Number one, what is adoption? Number two, what happens to a saint who knows and understands that he's a, he or she is adopted into the family of Yahweh? Three, briefly describe, summarize the four key concepts we consider in this lesson. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. Will you kindly share the video, friends and family, and share it as extensively as you can. Let others come into the knowledge of the truth so that we can do it together. We are better together. By the grace of the Lord, I make a short announcement after the word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, grant that all of us will be invested in single-minded pursuit of the kingdom purpose of which we were created. Help us, O oh God, to know that we are adopted into your family. We carry your DNA and we ought to be able to manifest your nature. We ought to be able to bring other submission to things in the heavenly realms. And Lord, help your people that they will take this revelation seriously for deliverance, for liberty in the spirit, that your name may be honored and glorified. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Bro, sisters, uh, once again, please, would you kindly share, let people receive the truth, and we all grow together. Second, I just want to say this to you, please, anywhere you are, tomorrow, Saturday, you can join us for the Coronation Prayer Cover for King Charles the Third. We're going to have the Global Prayer and Spiritual Cabinet for the month of April. It's dedicated for nations and persons of extreme strategic interest. The men and women across the world who have extreme strategic interest, they'll be prayed for by name, and then we'll zoom in on the king who will be as, you know, coron who undergo his coronation service on 6th May. And we have a whole lot of prayer projects, prophetic prayer actions, and if you are willing to go on some, we can share with you what the Lord is saying, and we're praying the will of the Father. It's not about man. It's not about all the things religious people bother about. We say, Lord, your determinate counsel for the throne, for the crown, determinate counsel for the sovereign and his queen, Camilla. Your determinate counsel, lay hold of his heart, his mind, his will, his emotion, and pass through him to get done what you have already ordained before the foundation of this world. And brothers and sisters, I want to say this to you, that some of these things have spiritual significance. One of them, when you see the feet of iron mixed with Mary clay in the United States of America, in the United Kingdom, see it in the European Union. And the Western world is a core area where what Daniel 2 talks spoke about, that after Rome will be a season of feet and a fix of iron mixed with merry clay. That's what is unfolding in the entire Western world. Brothers and sisters, awake, arise, align, and advance. We are better together. Thank you so much for being with us. Tomorrow, see you at the Global Prayer and Spiritual Cabinet. And the Lord bless you. Bye-bye.